both of you have fascinating stories. And Phil, you were in the heartland that night, Mm -hmm. November 8th. Talk to me about that. I was in Omaha, Nebraska, by choice. I wanted to be in the heart of America on the night of the election, whichever way it was going to go, because I had observed for uh, several months going what I felt was the tide turning toward uh, President Trump. And I thought the best place to be would be in the heart of America. And I was right. It was a great place to be because I was scheduled to speak before a large group of Republican women and their husbands. And what a crowd it was and what an opportunity it was to share in this spectacular victory. Because, uh, as I mentioned earlier about the uh, star-spangled banner and the question of what flag would be flying in the morning, well, we were all rejoicing that it was the, the red, white, and blue. And I saw hope, as I mentioned earlier as well. So it was a great honor and a privilege to see this part of American history, especially in contrast to what I had seen as an active law enforcement Mm -hmm. officer and the destructive nature of the policies that we were forced to comply with. So it was really a privilege to observe that part of the emerging policies that the Obama administration sent down the chain of command and then to have the opportunity kind of on a civilian side to see the emergence of the groundswell across the country. And I was so gratified to see that what I felt I was observing was actually, in fact, true. Mm. It wasn't just my hopeful imagination that I was seeing across the country. It really did happen. It was like beholding a form of, let's call it a political miracle. To me, the election was like a combination of Passover, a great deliverance, and the re-declaration of independence, you know, combined together, a moment of great deliverance, because I really want us to all realize, not only as we look ahead, at what we hope will happen in the months and years ahead, but also to comprehend what we were delivered from. Yeah. Well, as I said, Michelle, it was a terrible sin agenda that was going on. I mean, when you have the White House lit with the colors of the gay rainbow, that that was June 2015. I think that was a low point for a lot of people. And it just seemed like every perversion, including this transgender obsession, was just being celebrated. I think God said enough. Well, and I think the American people said enough. And and I think they recognized this was the last exit ramp for the country. Mm -hmm. And if we were not going to see a political change, if Hillary Clinton was going to continue and double down on the policies of Barack Obama, I think people just saw no hope that the United States would return to a position of Judeo-Christian morality. But not even just that, it's just, can we even be able to speak truth Mm -hmm. anymore? Can we even protect our children anymore? Because we were in a situation where the President of the United States on his own just issued a sheet of paper and said overnight every single public school in the country would have to have the girls bathrooms open to the boys and the boys bathrooms open to the girls and the girls shower rooms would be open and accessible to the boys because now what we were told from the White House is that when we look at our body in a shower our body isn't reality no, anymore not reality so we actually get to choose if we're a boy if we're a girl if we're one of like 58 different whatevers That's right. that we decide we want to be that day. In other words, we were all told that we were forced to repeat a lie, not the truth. We didn't even have the choice that we could repeat the truth anymore. We were all told that we were going to be enforced by the power of the federal government to repeat lies. And when you repeat lies, Romans 1 tells us, that's when you fall into deception. God gives us over to our own delusion. And so people have been in this very confusing period of what are we allowed to say? Is it okay to say this? Can, Can I not say that? And so people have been quiet and they have restricted, they've censored their own speech because they didn't know what the government was going to do to them. Meanwhile, their little five-year-old girl could be vulnerable to a 17-year-old male walking in on their bathroom, or my 85-year-old mother could be at a public restroom and seven 18-year-old males could come in and she could be vulnerable to them. Well, things have happened that aren't very Absolutely, they, they have. have happened. Absolutely, yes. they have. And people said, enough already. Yes. And 
so we were given a reprieve. Again, it isn't that politics is our God. It isn't that politics is necessarily the answer, but God has privileged us in this country that we get to be able to vote for the laws and the people that we live under. And so people decided to take that vote. It was completely improbable. I know it was reprieved. That night I was privileged in Dallas, Texas Mm -hmm. to be with David Barton from Wall Builders Ministries. And we were doing commentary that night on Daystar TV and and various other Mm -hmm. Christian channels. I saw you. It was excellent. It was unbelievable because we had intercessors there yeah. at the studio and their intercessors all over the United States that have been all crying the out world. to God all, all over, over the, world. the world. And in the green room that night, there was a TV and it was focused on believers in Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. And I had never, I walked into that green room and I said, who are those people? I thought maybe they were right there in Dallas. And they said, that's Jerusalem. That's believers in Jerusalem who are beseeching God yeah. for the American American election tonight. And I had electricity go up and down my spine because I thought if we have believers across the world humbling themselves and crying out to holy God for deliverance for this country, we've got a chance. Now, unlike Phil, I woke up that morning and I thought, I don't know if Trump is going to win. I don't know what's going to happen because I had been campaigning across the country for, yes. for Trump. And I saw great things happening in high Democrat voter registration mm-hmm. areas where you had very high numbers of Democrats that were going to vote for Donald. Donald Trump. But, you know, in this world, usually, like I had said earlier, for over 50 years, we've lost like mm-hmm. every battle. You know, yeah. those on the Judeo Christian traditional value side, we just lose like mm-hmm. almost everything all the time. And the left has been winning for yeah. over 50 years. So I thought, you know, the odds were completely yeah. against Trump's favor. It's kind of like the Super Bowl victory that we just saw happen. Just like Israel has won the last four games in the yeah. in the baseball competition. They nobody, you know, they had, they were like 401 to win anything. Just impossible odds. And yet we saw this happen. And that's why I think we're so excited because we know that this wasn't just in the natural. This was in the supernatural where God sovereignly, I believe, answered the prayers of believers beseeching him. And he's given us a reprieve. But a reprieve for what? Yeah. For what? What are we going to do with this? Because remember, over 50 years of destruction, destroying the foundations of this country, you don't just turn that on a dime unless God again intervenes. And that's where I think think as believers, it wasn't just the election that we were to be in prayer about. It's today that we're to be in prayer about so that our personal lives are changed by the gospel and so that our families and our churches and and what we touch and our prayer life needs to be focused on turning ourselves toward God. Because let's face it, the world is spinning out of control. The world has not turned away from evil or from rebellion or from the Tower of Babel and erecting a Tower of Babel in our day. And so what we need to be about is his business and cry out to him for our families, for our nation, for our president, for his cabinet. We need to cry out because Donald Trump, God bless him, I wouldn't want to be him. He's in a very difficult situation. And we need a sovereign God to have his hand on his shoulder and to speak into this day that we live into. 